Clayton, the algebra guy here. Our topic, as you can see on your screen, is factoring trinomials when A is not equal to one. So last lesson, we talked about when A is equal to one, and it's pretty straightforward. Now there's a couple more steps you wanna consider if A is not equal to one, so let's get into it. By the end of this video, here's what you'll be able to do. Factor, let's go down to this bottom here where we're looking at the, the specific algebra teak we're still discussing. Factoring, if possible, trinomials with real factors in the form of A squared plus BX plus C including perfect, perfect square trinomials of degree two. So here are the specifics, right? Factor with trinomials of a squared plus b, x plus c when a is not equal to one, and recognize a preliminary strategy to factor poly polynomials co completely. So what's the first things that you can consider before factoring? Because we talked about a number of different types of factors up to this point. We're gonna factor trinomials um, with a greatest common factor, and we're gonna use grouping in our factoring and the box method. So. These are two different ways you can use a factor. You can pick which one you like. Students tend to um, prefer box method, but I'll let you choose. The method I'll be spending the most of my time with, however, will be box method for that reason. All right, how will you know when to use each factoring method? At this point, we've talked about factoring greatest common factor, factoring by grouping, and using a box method. So when looking at a binomial, um, you want to consider factoring out the greatest common factor. When looking at the trinomial, we can use our box method to figure out what the two binomials are gonna to be to get this trinomial. And when you have more than three terms, we'll use grouping. So let me review that real quick before we move forward. So in this situation for a binomial, we see that both six and 72 have a factor of, I believe six, let me make sure, uh, 72, six, it's 12, it's two, so yeah, 12. So we're gonna factor out a six, and it's gonna look like this. So when we factor out that six, that's how you do it. You have a binomial, you, you can just factor out the greatest common factor. What if you have a trinomial? And the trinomial, we talked about using the box method to figure out the two binomials to give you that. And we started out this way, remembering that the top is gonna be R squared and the bottom right is gonna be negative 24. Wanting two numbers to multiply to get negative 24 while adding to get negative 10. So we think in our heads, or you can just go ahead and start um, writing out the factors to see which ones will work. So I'm, my first numbers I've thought about, there's two of them, right? There's six and four. So let me write 24. So I thought about a six times four and a 10 times two would give me, um, no, 10 times two, 12 times two. 12 and a two. So that'll give me a 10. So which one's gonna work? So let's try uh, to see which one might work for us. Um, six times four, well actually let me think about this far right here. No, I, I guess I just write it. So six times four, um, both of these will be negative to get a negative 10. That's not gonna work to get a negative 24 because negative times a negative is a positive. So that's not gonna work. So I already know that 12 and two may be a better choice. So 12 and two. This needs to be negative to get that. And now it becomes obvious that one's gonna be negative 12 and another positive two. And now my factors become more clear. This is R plus two and R minus 12. Because R times R is R squared, R times two is two R. Negative 12 R is negative 12 R. Um, negative 12 times two is negative 24. So these are my two factors. So I will write them R plus two and R minus 12. So that's a review from a previous lesson. And we've also talked about um, grouping. So what if you have more than three terms? You find a way to group these in such a way that you can take something out. Because they all have a P, so we could have taken the P out, but it'll help us even further if we can um, group these. So these two have a P, and that leaves me with P plus five for that Group. And for this one, they both have a P. So I'll take a P out of here. This leaves me Q. Actually, they have a, I didn't see that. They have a P and a Q. So I'm gonna take out a P and a Q. And this leaves me, actually, I just realized these both have a P. I wonder if that's looking funny. So let me start that over. I went too quick on that one. So these, P squared plus P, 5P, both, this one has a P, 
this is p plus five what i meant to do is on this pq um p yeah p p take that p out and now we got q plus five um no not a p my goodness i want to take out a p so badly q we're going to take out because they both have a q in them so now we take out a p plus five sorry about that um now i see that these two are two terms that can be taken out p plus five and my p and q is what they're being multiplied by so that's grouping box method grouping greatest common factor now when to use what where all right so let's factor this completely how would we do this so this is not equal to one right but it actually does it's kind of hidden we first realized that we can factor out something from each of these terms and this is two so we're going to do that first we're going to factor out the factor out the greatest common factor now you can actually solve this without doing that but it's going to make the problem a little bit bigger and a little bit more complicated so factor out greatest common factors as much as you possibly can whenever you can it's kind of like simplifying fractions you can work it but it's a lot simpler to go ahead and factor out or simplify a fraction so in this case take out the greatest common factor now i'm going to rewrite it in squared minus 4n minus 21. and all i did was ask myself two times what would give me these terms back so two times negative four give me negative eight two times negative 21 give me negative 42. now i would take this in fact to that part and i'm going to start with my box and this box is not looking boxy it's looking roxy if that's a term i don't like how it was looking all right so that's a little bit better up here i know i'm going to have n squared um negative 21 two numbers to give me 21 uh, one times 21 and three times seven three and seven is going to work to give me this four i need a negative four so this is going to have to be negative and now it becomes simple to see what my factors are in um, actually i'll slow down n times n is n squared n times what gives me three n that's going to be three n times what gives me negative 7n, it's going to be negative 7, and we can see that 3 and negative 7 gives us negative 21. So these indeed are our factors. So this is, becomes n plus 3. It looks like an h to me. So let me do n plus 3 from up here, and n minus 7. So now I factor this piece. Now I can't forget that in the front of her I had a 2, so I need to make sure that 2 stays there to keep this equation true. So now this is completely factored because all I did was take this and break it into this whole piece and break it into these two factors and left that two there. All right, what about this one here? <clears throat> Let me move this little thing out the way. Um, can I factor out anything that's coming from 4, 36, and 56? Well, I know 4 and 36 can go. I think 4 can go into 56 let's think uh, 1 16 14 so I believe there's a 14 that can come out of there so we're going to take out a 4 and that leaves me with y squared 4 times what gives me negative 36 that's negative 9y and 4 times 14 is 56 so I just want to double check that 4 times 14 6 yeah 56 all right so now I'm going to break this down into the two factors that I need. I know these are going to be y, but what are these two numbers going to be? So I need two, let's set up our box. And we know this is going to be y squared, and this is going to be, oh, um, actually, this is a good point. Um, students sometimes get confused here, and they start going back to this original one, but use this one that we factored, because it's a lot more simple. We don't want to use that one if we don't have to. So let's use this 1 times A is 14. So and, and this A times C is what I'm trying to say is 14. So we're not using 56. We're doing this 1 here in front of here. And this C is 14. And this B is negative 9. So 7 times 2 can give me a 9. And to get a negative 9, I'm going to have to make this both negative. 
And does that make 14? Negative 7 times negative 2 does give me a positive 14. So these two will work. So negative 7y and negative 2y. And I know my last term is 14. So that's going to help me get my factors. I know these two, y times y gives me y squared. I like to start there because that's usually the easiest one, right? Um, this is a y. And y times negative 7 gives me a negative 7y for this term. And to get a negative 2y, y times negative 2. So now I know that my numbers are negative 2 and negative 7. So there you go. 4 times y minus 2 times y minus 7. Moving right along. I would just work that one. Um, what about this one? I would pause this one and see if you can work this one by yourself before I do. Now, the first thing I notice is that looking at the numbers, they have a common factor of four. So I'm going to take out a four. Now, looking at the variables, they do have all at least one u. So I can take out one u. They have that in common. And now I'm going to rewrite this as u squared because I already have a u, I just need two more, plus 4u, because 4 times 4 gives me this 16, u times u gives me this u squared, and to get a negative 20, 4 times negative 5 would give me a negative 20, and I don't have to write a u here because we have one that's been factored out already. <clears throat> now I'm going to take this piece and factor that, and I'm going to use my, actually I'm going to draw what I know I'm going to need next. So I'm, I know I'm going to have 4u, and this, this part is going to break down into these two parentheses. I know this is going to be u times u. I just don't know what I'm adding and subtracting. So that's what I'm using my box method to discover. And this time I'm going to have this draw the box for me because it's much nicer. Oh, look at that crazy line. My goodness, drawing straight lines is not easy. All right, so this is u squared and minus 5. Um, I know this is going to be u times u, but I don't know these two numbers. So I can use my big X here and do a times c. And don't do this a. We're going to do this a. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. And my b is 4. 5 times 1 gives me 5. I need a positive 4, so that becomes negative. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Um, and those are our factors. Plus 5 and minus one. Notice I was able to go straight to here without using the box, and this is because we're dealing with the a that's equal to one. I've shown you the box because we're gonna need it later when it doesn't equal, but of course it'll work in the box as well. Um, negative one and five. So we'll see, this is a u, this is a u, and that was supposed to be our five and our minus one. All right, what about this one? So can we factor out something from the 3, 22, and 7? No, they don't have any common factors. So now we actually have a situation where we do not have an a that equals 1. What are we going to do? Well, I'm, notice I'm still going to start with my box method, my tried and true box method. And I'm going to remember that this top number is still going to be 3y squared. And this is still going to be 7. But I don't know these two numbers, so let's draw my x to discover those numbers. I know my a times c gives me the top number. 3 times 7 is 21. See, now this is important, and this is why I taught you to do a times c. Because if I hadn't, you may have made the mistake and just keep thinking this last number goes up top. But really, we're doing a times c. And by that, just to remind you, the standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, at equals zero. We'll get to that later. But this is a standard form ax squared plus bx plus c. So when I say a, I mean that coefficient in front of x squared, which is three. And when I say c, I mean the one that doesn't have a variable. Multiply those two together, get 21. And your b is still the middle term is 22. So now I'm asking myself, what two numbers multiply to give me 21, add to get 22? It's not seven and three, because I can't get a 22 from that, but it, I can do 21 times one. 21 times 1 is 21. 21 plus 1 is 22. So 21 um, y and 1 y. So now I need to factor. And watch carefully as I factor here. I'm going to change colors to see if I can make this point. 
Um, I need these numbers up here. I know that this a, is at least a Y and a Y. However, I don't know which one's a three. Um, so it becomes a little bit um, difficult to figure that out just by looking at it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use what we know of great radius common factors to figure out the numbers that belong here. So I'm gonna draw an arrow that starts up and from bottom to up and say, I want the number that goes here. So what is the greatest common factor between 21Y and seven? Well, they don't have a variable in common, but the numbers do. They both have a seven. And this number is positive, so I'm gonna make that positive because the last number where this arrow ends is positive. I'm gonna make that positive. If it were negative, I would have made that negative. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And that's how I got my Y. Well, if I go across here, I do the same thing and realize that three and 21 are also in common. So there is a three in front of here. So notice when I went up, it was just a Y, just a one and a Y. Now it's a three Y there. And lastly, I'm gonna go across here and seven and Y have, don't look like they have anything in common. So it must just be one. So they don't have a variable or numbers <clears throat> greater than one. So we're just gonna put one those are my factors now so my factors are now y y plus 7 and 3y plus 1 that's how you're going to factor that and that's why i've taught you the box method so that you can be able to use this system now without this there's other methods where you can guess and check put in different combinations and i prefer this as well as my students so it's, it's more compact and more precise Let's try another one. Try this one before I do. First, does it have any GCFs, any greatest common factors that can take it out? Well, they don't have any Bs on, for every term. And 6, 13, and 5 don't have greatest common factors. So I realize now that this is a problem where A is not equal to 0, but I'm still going to use my box. All right, so this is now my box method. I'm going to put my 6. B, B kind of looks like a six, which I don't like using. So I should have used a different um, variable. So that's a six B squared. And down here is my top five. Now be careful again on this one, A times C. We don't want to put a five up there. We want to put an A times C, which is 30. And our B is negative 13. Don't or forget the negative. Because some students ask, is that, a is that a negative sign or a minus sign? And I say, yes. If you put a plus sign here, then that's, you can see that's a negative 13. And that's the same problem. You're just adding a negative. Uh, if you left it minus, it's still adding a negative. So um, minus negative, same thing. So what two numbers here? So let's look 30 at the factors of 30. 2, 15, that's a 30, 3, 10, 5, and 6. So those are my factors. Which one's gonna give me a 13? Well, there's two of them, right? Two and 15 and three and 10 will give me a 13. But which one's gonna work? Well, which one of these can I add together to get a negative 13? Uh, well, both of them, if you make the both negative on the three and 10 and the 15 negative on the two and 15. All right, which one of these can I um, get a positive 30? So let me actually write this out so you can see what I mean. So two and 15, if I made this negative so that these add together to get this negative 13, this satisfies what I need for the bottom. But when I multiply these two, I do not get a negative 30. I need a positive 30 here. So I'm gonna erase those. Let's try another number or the other pair of numbers, see if those work. And they better work because I don't have any more. So three and 10, this both have to be negative to add up to get negative 13. And when we multiply negative times a negative, it does give me a positive 30. So this will work. So now I realize that I have a negative three B and a negative 10 B. To find my factors, I'm gonna use my arrows like I did before. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to use a different color. So I'm gonna say, to find this number, I'm gonna draw an arrow up. And we're gonna say, what's the greatest common factor between negative three B and five? Well, I know it's gonna be a minus because my last number here ends off a minus. So keep that in mind. That's how we determine if that's gonna be plus or minus. 
no variables in common and three and five have no other common factors other than one. And so we're gonna do the same thing here. They both have at least one B and six and 10, they have a two um, as a greatest common factor. And we're gonna go across here. They both have a B and six and three, the greatest is three. Now I'm gonna not make that negative, but positive, because notice my arrow ends in this box where the six is positive. And I'm gonna go across here. And again, my, my uh, this is negative, so I know it's gonna be a negative something. I don't know what yet. What about 10 and five? Well, that's gonna be a five. So there are my factors there. Two B minus one and three B minus five. So those are my two factors that if I were to multiply again, would bring me right back to this expression. <clears throat> and a quick check sometimes, I, I make sure my last numbers are here, negative one and negative five, it gives me this, and my first two give me that. And you can kind of eyeball it from the rest or work it out if you want to, if you want to completely check it. All right, let's try another one. I'm gonna draw my box because I can already see this 47 is not gonna be something I can factor out pretty easily uh, with 14 and seven. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a box. 14x squared, negative seven. I need these two numbers to get those. I can draw my big X and do some little experimenting. What's 14 times negative seven? I don't wanna, if I had a calculator, I would do this, but I don't feel like taking it out. So this is 98 and I need a negative 47. <clears throat> what two numbers multiply to give me 98 and add to give me 47? Man, that sounds like a big feat. What numbers are those? Um, so we could take 98 and get all the factors of 98 to um, this is going to be a 49, maybe that's what this is supposed to be. So let's make sure I did that. No, that's right. 14, 2, 7, 98, good. All right, so 47, so 49, so it looks like it's going to be this one. So I didn't have to do too much. Thank goodness, right? Because who wants to mess with that big number? But if you needed to, I showed you in a previous video how you can use your calculator to find those factors. Um, but we didn't need to do that. So we know it's gonna be two and 49. Well, at least hope, let's hope it is. So let's look and see. Uh, we need a, this one to be the uh, bigger one, negative 47. When we multiply these, we need to get a negative eight, negative 98. And I forgot to put that negative because it's 14 times a negative seven. And don't forget that that's a, a little thing that's a, come, become a big mistake. So 14 times negative seven is what should have gave me this negative 98. So this does work out. Two times 40, did I say 49? Yeah, two times 49 does give me 98. So this will work. Two X negative 49. Okay. Negative 49. And I'm gonna use a different color. So now that I have the box filled in, let's figure out what these factors must be to get this answer. So I'm gonna, uh, I feel like I need to get um, So we're gonna use our arrow, go up, and look at two and seven. Oh, they just have a one in common. There's nothing else there. This this one's positive, so I left it a positive one. And I'm gonna go up here, and for 14 and 49, uh, 14 and 49, what's the greatest factor, seven? And this should be an X on both of these. So seven X going across here. The greatest factor, they have an X in common. They also have a two in common and that's a positive two. And going across here, this is gonna be negative obviously because this last one that I arrow finished on was negative and they both have a seven in common. So when I write out these factors, we're gonna get seven X plus one and two X minus seven. Now, I told you I'd show you a different way, um, and I may do that on this next problem, uh, but let me make sure I close off this one first. So this, these are the factors that you would get there. 
So I want to show you one other way we could have worked this. And that, look at these huge numbers, my goodness. So I've been using a box method, but I told you in the beginning that I'll show you how to use um, grouping by splitting it up as well. Let me um, double check and see where I want to go first. Okay, we're going to do a star question here in just a minute. But I want to show you how we can use a different method. Um, we're still going to start out with our X. Um, but let's say we got this one here. We can't factor out anything that's in common. So what do we do? My first instinct is to draw my box. Um, but I'm not going to draw my box in this. So I'm going to draw my X. I'm still going to use my X idea. Actually, let me put it somewhere else. Let's put it over here. And I'm going to do 18 times 15. Uh, I'm going to pull up. Uh, should I? No, I'll just do it by hand. 18. No. Nah. Forget that. I messed up too many um, problems to do this by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and check it on the calculator. So let's just put that in the calculator. Um, 18 times 15. 18 times 15. That's 270. And I'll leave the calculator out for now so that we can refer back to it if we need to because we're dealing with a lot of big numbers here. So 18 times 15, we said was 270. There's our A and C. Below is our negative 37. I need two numbers to multiply to give me 270, add up to give me negative 37. Oh, goodness, who wants to do that? That sounds like craziness. Um, let's just skip that one, or not. Actually, we could pull up our calculator to do some of the work for us. So instead of writing out all the factors of 270 and going one times 270, two times 135, I think it is, is I mean all those we can use a calculator to do that part for us. So here's how you would do it. I mentioned this earlier, but I could just put in here 270 and divided by x. And what I'm telling the calculator to do is to divide by all these integers that I'm doing in my head. 270 times divided by 1, divided by 2, 270 divided by 3, and so on and so forth. So it's going to automatically do that. I'm press enter. You don't see anything, but the graphs here is just bigger than this, what we can see on the screen, but that's not important. Let's pull up a table and look at what we see. So here it is. Look, 1 times 270, 2 times 135. So here are all the combinations that give us 270. We didn't have to actually do the work, and you can do it this way, even if it's a smaller number. Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a number that has a 37 difference. I'm looking for two numbers that have about um, 37 as a difference. Not about, but exactly 37 um, as a difference. So let me scroll down here and see. That's that's too big. 3 and 90, that doesn't give me 37. Uh, 54 and 5, no. 45 and 6, uh, that's close. That's 39 if I were to subtract them. Let's move um, 9 and 30, nope, 10 and 27, wait a minute, that might do it. But you know what I'm excited about is I didn't have to work all those factors to get it. So that makes it so much easier. So now I can say I know what these numbers are going to be, 10 and 27. So what? I can't get negative 37 with these two being positive. I have to make them negative. And negative times the negative does give me 270. So I'm really happy now that these numbers worked out and I didn't have to keep going for my search. But now what do I do to help me get my, um, my factors? So before, I would have you put them in a box. Uh, we would put these in a box method. And we'll fill these pieces in and we'll do the greatest common factor and figure out what they are. So I'll put in 18n squared and 15. And then I'll put these two numbers in I just found. Negative 10n and negative 27n. And then we'll find the greatest common factors and we could do that. But I just want to show you another way. Um, just so you know it, you might like it more, I don't know, but you be the judge. What we're going to do is take this middle term and just like these two give me my middle term right here, negative 37, and I'm going to divide it into those two numbers. It's the same thing. We didn't, we're not going to change the problem. We're just going to do negative 10 
n and minus 27 n. So all we did was take this middle term and, and broke it into those pieces. Now let's rewrite the 18 n squared and the 15. So we're gonna work it from here instead of using the box method to find our factors. So what do you recognize? We've done a problem like this if you, if you have three or more terms. What did I ask to do? I said, let's group them. So we're gonna group these like that. And I'm gonna put a plus sign so I don't think we're multiplying here. We're, this was subtraction. So now let's look at this first group and factor out as much as we can. From 18 to 10, the biggest factor I can see is like, let's think two and five. I think it's just two, right? And between n squared and n, that's easy. They both have at least one n. So now when I rewrite this, it is like that. And what about negative 27 and 15? Well, that's a negative. We're always going to factor out that negative. And 27 and 15, well, that I think is 3. This is 3 and 5 for 15. So the biggest is 3. They don't have a variable in common, so we'll leave it at 3. Negative 3 times what gives me a 27? That's going to be a positive 9n because we, 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 we didn't factor out the n. And negative 3 times a negative uh, 5 or positive 5 will give me, uh, what did I say, fifth positive 15? No, I need a negative 15. So minus 5. And why did I put that? Because negative 3 times negative 5 gives me that positive 15. Now look at what happened when I did this. I'm going to change these colors because I'm tired of using red and green. Um, I have common factors now that can be factored out. So now I have 9n minus 5 that can be factored out. And they're being multiplied by 2n minus 3. So here's my... 2n and minus 3. So those are my factors. So that's one way you could do it. And this is what I was talking about as far as why you need to know how to do grouping and you split that middle term. Now, you could have still used this, right? I'm going to go ahead and show you that they're going to give you the same answer. So you could have used this and just said between negative 10 and 15, I have a negative 5 because this is negative. So I kept that negative sign and they don't have a variable in common. And I went up here and I noticed they both have an N in common. And the 18 and 27 have a three. Yeah, it looks like a three. Let's see, three, six. Yeah, biggest is three. And when I go across this way, they both have an N in common. And 18 and 10, uh, biggest factor is gonna, it's gonna be positive. Is it two? Yeah. And here is going to be negative 3. So look at my factors 3n minus 5 and 2n minus 3. So I missed it because I forgot that the biggest is 9 right here. So good. I'm looking at this. So 9 times 2 is 18, 9 times 3 is 27. So the biggest was 9. So I didn't factor that. I didn't take out the greatest common factor. But you'll see that look, they're the same exact factors as we got here. Bam and bam. So you be the judge. You pick which way feels more comfortable to you that you, you like and you stick with that one. I'm gonna skip this one, um, but I do wanna make a point that sometimes you're gonna have that piece there. Actually, this is not common, to be honest with you. Um, but you could, you're gonna factor out y squared, obviously. That's the biggest you can factor out. And then looks like a five. So I do want to at least, if you're going to do that problem, I'm get you started with how to factor that to get it down to looking at 2y squared plus 11y plus 12. <clears throat> and now from here, I'm going to factor this inside piece. Now, I guess I'm going to go ahead and do it now since we're here. Um, let me clear this. All right, so we, I don't know if we'll need that. So let's just focus, now we've taken this out, let's just focus on this inside piece here. And we're gonna use our box method again. Uh, we'll put it here. And 
And again, I'm just looking at this part that's still in this parentheses. Make it easy on ourselves. And this is going to be 12. I don't know those two pieces. How do I find those two? Yep, I'm going to use my x. A times C is 2 times 12 is 24. The middle term is 11. What numbers give me, multiply to give me 24, but add to give me 11. I'm thinking 8 and 3. And it looks like it's going to work. 8 plus 3 is 11. 8 times 3 is 24. Yep, it works. It works, ladies and gentlemen. So there we go. As you see, I'm picking up the pace a little bit because you've seen these a few times already. Now I'm going to factor this. 8 and 12, the biggest factor is a 4. Um, this one here, 2 and 3 is just going to be a 1. So it's just going to be a Y, a 1Y. And if I move this way, I can see it's the 2 is going to be the biggest here. And they both have a Y coming. And here it's going to be a 3. And it's going to be a positive 3. So those are my factors right looking at me in the face. Y plus 4 and 2Y plus 3. Hope that helps. So I really want to get to our star problem. So what if you're on the test, what would it look like? Here's how one of the problems from a couple of years ago in 2017, number 17, um, how one of the problems looked. They said factor this one. So how would you factor this one? Pause it and, and select the answer that you would choose if you were taking the test. All right, so I would go ahead and set up a box. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with both the box method and the calculator. Um, six times, I need to, 6x squared, and this is 5. I need to use my x to find those two numbers. 6 times 5 is 30, because those are my a times c, and then my bottom number is 13. We've done this one already, haven't we? Um, 10 and 3 are my numbers. 10 times 3 is 30, 10 plus 3 is 13, so that helps out a lot there. 10 and 3 and then when I look for my greatest common factors it's pretty easy on that one it's just 5 um, these both have an X and a 3 in common because 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 1 is 3 and moving this way I can see there's a 2 for both 6 and 10 they both have a factor of 2 and they both have an X they, the, as factors um, across here there's just 1 so these are my factors 3x plus 1 and 2x plus 1 3x I'm sorry 3x plus 5 3x plus 5 and 2x plus 1 now um, just real quick most of the problems on the star I've noticed you can cancel out half the answer choices by just doing a quick little test on a lot of problems for instance notice that this last number is a positive 5 so, well, since that's a positive 5, I know that these last two numbers have to multiply to give me a positive 5. A, answer choice A gives you a negative 5. That's not even possible to get this answer. So, just glancing at that gives me a chance to cross that out. Negative 5 again for B. Now, C and D give you positive choices, but you have 50%. You could close your eyes and have a 50% chance of getting that right now. Now, we're not going to do that. But if you did, you have a much higher percent chance of getting that one correct. Now, I left my calculator out here because you can put this in the calculator. I'm not going to go through all the steps, but I do just want to show you um, really quickly. When it says equivalent, I've shared this many times, you can put this in the calculator and just put these in the calculator to see which graphs are equal. So if I were to put um, 6, say 6x six squared minus 15x and plus five plus five there's a graph so i'm looking for a graph that equals this <clears throat> um, if you put in any of these others they're going to be completely different graphs this is the only graph that's going to work and i'm going <clears> to <throat> just put the right one in for time's sake and not do that now you have time to do it on your test you can put in each and every one of these to see if it works you got four hours so take your time and do that correctly um three x plus five and if I press enter I didn't put the right one in did I 3x 2x two, uh, two so I'm glad I did this 2x plus 1 3x plus 5 should give me the same thing as 6x squared plus 13x plus 5 so let me check did I put this in right 6x squared 
Ah, haha, look at that. I didn't put the answer in right. The easiest thing, Brandon. All right, so I'm going to put this in right now. Plus, and that's supposed to be a 13. And you probably saw that too. And now look what we got. Exactly the same graphs. So, yay, I'm glad I made the mistake. So that you cannot make the mistake. But yeah, just put them in carefully and double check. Because if, if you would have put that in incorrectly, you'd have been thinking, let me cross that one out. And it was just a simple typing error. Now, I knew that my work was right. So I'm like, no, nah, this can't be true. But make sure you type that in correctly. All right. Another problem that you'll see is one like this. Um, this one you can't put in, right? Because they only give us one of the factors. And you can't check it in the calculator so that's not going to help us a lot um, the calculator is not going to help us a lot we're really just going to have to factor this one so let's get to it let's just factor this one and do the diligence we know we need to do on it <clears throat> uh, i'm going to start off with um, I, my box because i love writing this box as it helps me get started and i know to put these two in here 18 x squared. So this is a, this is one piece that you can feel comfortable like i know what i'm gonna do this all the time and it gets my mind thinking. I know this is going to be x times x. This just kind of gets me thinking and going in the right direction. Now, I want to know what these two numbers are so I can finish this process. So I'm going to use my big X. A times C is 36. And this is negative 15. Two numbers to give me 36 that give me uh, 15. Uh, what are those numbers? Let's see, 36. I have a 1 times 36, a 2 times 18, no, that's not going to do it, a 3 times 12, hey, that might work, and a 4 times 9. So I think 3 and 12 are going to be my, my go-to numbers, so let's see if they work. 3 and 12, these both have to be negative to add to get to negative 15, multiply them to get 36, and yes, they do work, yay! So there we go, negative 12x. Now I can figure out what these numbers are. This is going to be a negative because my I finished off on a negative here when my arrow went up. And they don't have anything other than 1 in common. Looking up here is going to be, let's see, 4, uh, 12, 6. We have a 6 in common. So it's 6x um, is the biggest in common for those. And let's go across here to the left. Looking at 18 and negative 3. The, I start with the three because that's the smallest. I know we can use the three. Why is it positive? Well, because my my last box with the arrow finished is right there on this positive. And moving across here, I can see that I'm going to have this is supposed to be an x by the way. I'm going to have a negative answer, and it's going to be two. So those are my two factors, right? Six x minus one, and three x minus two. All right, 3x minus 2, you take it. So that should be the right answer. All right, um, did we cover everything we wanted? Absolutely. Factor trinomial, trinomials when a is not equal to 1. Recognize the preliminary strategy for solving poly polynomials. We talked about when you want to do greatest common factor, uh, when you want to do grouping, and when you want to use the box. Um, so we did those methods. And yes, this is the, the TEEK, Algebra TEEK that we covered um, for that test. Guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Brandon Clayton, the Algebra Guy, and I will see you next lesson.